Hi there, I'm Mark Phillips, and I want to welcome you to another episode of Enhancing the Human Experience, the show where we talk about anything and everything related to getting the most out of life. And in this episode, I'm going to be sharing with you one of my favorite essays by one of my favorite authors, and that is The Golden Key by Emmett Fox. It's a really short essay, which you can find um, floating around online. It prints out at about two pages, eight and a half by 11, or you can also find it in some of his books. I'm going to actually read the essay to you here shortly, and I'm reading from Power Through Constructive Thinking, which is one of Emmett Fox's books, and it, the whole book is amazing. Any of his stuff is amazing, but specifically, you know, this golden, uh, the golden key is so simple and so direct, and he really breaks down what I feel is our really esoteric ideas and for many years, like, you know, many thousands of years, kind of hidden from the from the general masses, right? And where you had to be a scholar or, um, you know, a sage or a monk or a priest to really get a handle on these types of um, ideas, or like a biblical scholar, right, which most people uh, weren't. And so he breaks it down really simply. And so that's why I like the golden key. And then you can use it as a tool to overcome anything that you're, any resistance you're facing, fear, doubt, anxiety, worry, whatever roadblocks that you're encountering, the golden key will help you get through them, get over them, around them, under them, whatever. Um, And that's why I like it so much. So I'm going to read the golden key. Well, you know what I will first do? I want want to give you some background on Emmett Fox. Now, I am not a, um, like an Emmett Fox expert, but I do know that he was a uh, lecturer, spiritual master, and teacher. He traveled all around the country and even the world, and he gave lectures to people because they really loved hearing him break it down so simply, right? And as I read this golden key, you'll get it too if you're not familiar with the golden key. You'll see what I mean about being simple and easy to understand. He doesn't convolute things. But uh, he had he gave lectures in New York City at his Divine Science Church, and he also spoke at Unity Churches. In fact, I'm also going to share with you a very short passage from his book, Life is Consciousness, which is one of my all-time, like, eight to ten favorite books ever. Um, and he gave that speech at a Unity Church conference. And then of course they turned it into a book. So this is the, you know, the new thought movement, unity, divine science, they're all kind of happening at the same time in the early 1900s and mid 1900s. And Emmett Fox passed away in 1951. So once I get into the, once I get into his material, you'll see why he was so well received and why he was able to resonate with so many people, because it's really going to, it's really going to have a big impact on you. I'm certain of it. So let me just let me just go ahead and read the golden key. Now I may give a little bit of uh, commentary here and there, but I will uh, let you know when I'm kind of reading his stuff or when I'm kind of giving my two cents. But so here we go. The Golden Key by Emmett Fox. Scientific prayer will enable you sooner or later to get yourself or anyone else out of any difficulty on the face of the earth. It is the golden key to harmony and happiness. To those who have no acquaintance with the mightiest power in existence, this may appear to be a rash claim, but it needs only a fair trial to prove that, without a shadow of a doubt, it is a just one. You need take no one's word for it, and you should not. Simply try it for yourself and see. God is omnipotent, and man is his image and likeness and has dominion over all things. This is the inspired teaching, and it is intended to be taken literally, at its face value. Man means every man, and so the ability to draw on this power is not the special prerogative of the mystic or the saint, as is so often supposed, or even of the highly trained practitioner. Whoever you are, wherever you may be, the golden key to harmony is in your hand now. This is because in scientific prayer, it is God who works and not you. And so your particular limitations or weaknesses are of no account in the process. And I want to comment there. Emmett Fox is famous for helping us to understand that we need to remove ourselves from this, from the situation. And we resist a lot of the stuff that we resist life in a sense, right? That's the human, that's like the human nature. Emma Fox is famous for reminding us this over and over again, right? As he's doing here. So let me continue. 
You are only the channel through which the divine action takes place, and your treatment will really be just the getting of yourself out of the way. Beginners often get startling results at the first time of trying. For all that is absolutely essential is to have an open mind and sufficient faith to try the experiment. Apart from that, you may hold any views on religion or none. As for the actual method of working, like all fundamental things, it is simplicity itself. All that you have to do is this. Now this is the golden key right here, this coming up sentence. Stop thinking about the difficulty, whatever it is, and think about God instead. That's the golden key. Let me read it again. Stop thinking about the difficulty, whatever it is, and think about God instead. See, I told you it was simple. Now here I continue. This is the complete rule, and if only you will do this, the trouble, whatever it is, will presently disappear. It makes no difference what kind of trouble it is. It may be a big thing or a little thing. It may concern health, finance, a lawsuit, a quarrel, an accident, or anything else conceivable. But whatever it is, stop thinking about it and think about God instead. This is all you have to do. The thing could not be simpler, could it? God himself could scarcely have made it simpler, and yet it never fails to work when given a fair trial. Do not try to form a picture of God, which is, of course, impossible. Work by rehearsing anything or everything you know about God. God is wisdom, truth, inconceivable love. God is present everywhere, has infinite power, knows everything, and so on. It matters not how well you may think you understand these things. Go over them repeatedly. But you must stop thinking of the trouble, whatever it is. The rule is to think about God. And if you are thinking about your difficulty, you are not thinking about God. To be continually glancing over your shoulder, as it were, in order to see how matters are progressing is fatal, because that is thinking of the trouble, and you must think of God, and of nothing else. Your object is to drive the thought of the difficulty right out of your consciousness, for a few minutes at least, substituting it for the thought of God. This is the crux of the whole thing. If you can become so absorbed in this consideration of the spiritual world that you really forget for a while all about the trouble concerning which you began to pray, you will presently find that you are safely and comfortably out of your difficulty, that your demonstration is made. In order to, quote, golden key, a troublesome person or difficult situation, think, now I am going to golden key John or Mary or that threatening danger. Then proceed to drive all thought of John or Mary or the danger right out of your mind, replacing it by the thought of God. By working in this way about a person, you are not seeking to influence his conduct in any way except that you prevent him from injuring or annoying you and you do him nothing but good. Therefore, he is certain to be in some degree a better, wiser, and more spiritual person just because you have golden keyed him. A pending lawsuit or other difficulty would probably fade out harmlessly without coming to a crisis, justice being done to all parties concerned. If you find that you can do this very quickly, you may repeat the operation several times a day with intervals between. Be sure, however, each time you have done it that you drop all thought of the matter until the next time. This is important. We have said that the golden key is simple, and so it is. But of course, it is not always easy to turn. If you are very frightened or worried, it may be difficult at first to get your thoughts away from material things. But by constantly repeating some statement of absolute truth that appeals to you, such as, there is no power but God, or I am a child of God, filled and surrounded by the perfect peace of God, or God is love, or God is guiding me now, Or perhaps best and simplest of all, just God is with me. However mechanical or dead it may seem at first, you will soon find that the treatment has begun to take and that your mind is clearing. Do not struggle violently. Be quiet but insistent. Each time that you find your attention wandering, just switch it straight back to God. Do not try to think out in advance what the solution of your difficulty will probably turn out to be. This is technically called outlining and will only delay the demonstration. Leave the question of ways and means strictly to God. You want to get out of your difficulty, that is sufficient. You do your half and God will never fail to do his. And he ends with this sentence. 
Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that's the golden key. Pretty short, right? And pretty cool, right? So obviously, you know, when I first discovered it, I was like, this is awesome because there's a tendency in in humanity to like make things more difficult and complex, more complicated than they need to be. And Emmett Fox doesn't do that. And that's why I love his stuff. Now, I loved the golden key so much that I had little cards, they're business size cards made up with with a synopsis. Basically, I I shrunk the golden key down and and put it into three sentences, right? I condensed it. And I I will put pictures of these cards up on my website, gmarkphillips.com in the show notes so you can take a look at them and, you know, save the picture if you like, but essentially it's just it's just a card that I give people because like I said, I mean, I love the golden key. It's super awesome. And <clears throat> excuse me, and I wanted to share that with people. So on the back of this card, which is what I call the golden key cards, I have this. And this, are, this is Emmett Fox's synopsis in three sentences of the golden key that I did. So it says, the golden key to overcoming any difficulty is stop thinking about the difficulty, whatever it is, and think about God instead. All that is absolutely essential is to have an open mind and sufficient faith. So that's that's why I love it so much. Now, as far as how to use the golden key, obviously he, he tells you in the essay how to use it, but here are some of my suggestions. You know, our, our minds wander. Human beings are, you know, we're notorious for like, what's that? What's this? What's that? Our attention span is really, really short. And I've recently heard of studies saying it's getting shorter, which is not necessarily a good thing. But so I carry this golden key with me quite a bit of the time, if not all the time. And if I'm working, maybe I'm writing something or doing something, I have it with me near my computer, and I just keep it in my field of vision and, and in my awareness, right, in my focus. Because like he said, focus on God or the omnipotent power, you know, divine intelligence, whatever is going to get you through the situation that you're facing. Because it, all of it is resistance, right? If if we're ever having difficulty in fear or doubt or limitation, whatever, it's just a form of resistance. And this golden key takes our mind off the resistance and allows the flow to begin, right? And then we start writing, start talking, start working, whatever we're doing, right? Allows that flow to begin. And once the flow happens, then it, it kind of is self-perpetuating, right? So, but we need to kind of remove that stop in the first place. So that's how I use the golden key. And again, it's really simple. You, you can use it in however way you want. If you're having the interpersonal relationship difficulties, right? Golden key. Don't think about the problem. Think about God. Taking your mind off the problem and focusing on God will do it, right? That's all we need to do. And and I like this um, cure or this prescription, if you will, because it's just so simple, right? So that's kind of how I use it. Um, and I, you know, write other little things on here, um, like his, the 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 one that resume, resonates with me the most, you know, he, he talks about, hey, uh, think that God is with me, all that. And I use that when I wrote that on here, you know, God is with me. Omnipotent power is with all of us, right? So, you know, make little notes to yourself on on whatever you you know card that you carry with you, or if you want to print off the golden key, just whatever resonates with you, right? I think all people are different, and we all have different ways of kind of coming to the same conclusion, right? So, I also want to read to you just a couple of short passages from two other books by Emmett Fox, and I'll put references to these in the show notes in the resources section so that you can go check them out. But like I mentioned, this book, Life is Consciousness, is absolutely amazing, and it's about maybe a quarter inch. It's less than a quarter inch thick. Um, It's a super short read. You can probably get through it in 20 minutes. You know, I'm not a super fast reader, so I can get through it in about 20 minutes. Um, But let me read this, this passage to you. So this is from Life is Consciousness by Emmett Fox. And this is the talk that he gave in front of Unity Church members. I don't even know the year. It was a, it was a while ago. Um, so here it is. 
the only fundamental way to change things is to change your consciousness because you always must and always will get the conditions that belong to your consciousness. You cannot cheat nature. You can drag to you through willpower certain things that do not belong to you, but you can only keep them for a short period. The moment you take your hands off them, they will fly away. So see, that's his, that's uh, saying that we can get what we want. And you probably realize this in your own life through sheer dogged determination and willpower, but it never stays, right? Because the, you Things in the universe always reach an equilibrium, right? What you are comes to you, and if you aren't in alignment with that from a consciousness standpoint, however you however when you look at it, consciousness, vibrationally, uh, whatever, it's not going to stay with you, right? Whether it's a, a person, a job, um, a situation, money, whatever. We have to have the consciousness to get it first, and th- that's where you build all of the real, all of your reality, and you're realizing your goals and dreams in your consciousness first, right? So that is from the goal. Uh, life is consciousness. Now I'm going to read one more passage, and this one's from another of his awesome books called "The Sermon on the Mount: The Key to Success in Life." And this ties in with the golden key, and uh, you'll see why in a moment. And here's what he says. The greatest glory of the spiritual basis is that you begin to know. When you have obtained the smallest truth demonstration by means of scientific prayer, you have experienced something that never leaves you. You have the witness of truth within yourself. You are no longer dependent upon the word of somebody else. You know for yourself, and this is the only authority worth having. So see, once we do the golden key and get a result, that's all we need to know that it works. And then it's just repeating it over and over again. And also, there's one more hurdle we have to get over, and that is the removing of the doubt that's still present, right? There's uh, Doubt is kind of inherent in the human experience. And so we, we will have a tendency to say, oh, no, that was coincidence. That was just coincidence. There's no coincidence. It's not coincidence. It really does work. And it really is us creating only because we have that that God spark and the creative power of God flowing through us. And then we direct it, right? So in a sense, you could say it isn't us creating, which I sometimes feel is more true. I think that's more true. It's God creating, God acting through us, and then we just direct it, right? Right. So I like to look at it that way more, and I, I explain it more like that in my own mind to myself. But so hopefully you can see how awesome Emmett Fox is. And any of his books, I would recommend you to get into your library because they're awesome. But if I had to choose only one of these three, you know, in addition to going and finding the golden key, like I said, if you search golden key online, you'll find a bunch of PDFs floating around out there. Additionally, People talk about it on YouTube. Um, they they write about it all the time. It's impacted a lot of people's lives. I'm not like, you know, the first person to talk about the golden key by any means. <laughs> so, but if I had to recommend one of his books from these three, it would be Life is Consciousness. And this book, I probably read, if not every couple of days, at least every week. Um, and when I'm in my Emmett Fox zone, I read it every day because it's so good. It's that good. So that kind of concludes this, this, uh, podcast episode on Emmett Fox. And I really want to thank you for listening. And I hope you got something of value from it. Um, tune in again, and we'll talk about more great stuff on how to enhance the human experience. Thanks very much. Have a fantastic day.